This is Audible. The Rothman Consulting Group presents Agile and Lean Program Management by Johanna Rothman, read by Zoe Walrand. Forward. I wish this book had been published the last time I ran a major project. It is a pragmatic and action-based, but in a way that is also consistent with theory, something that's all too rare. The agile community as a whole is riddled with rigid methods imposed with religious zeal to support training and certification programs. In contrast, this book understands that scaling agile is about the assembly of different tools, methods, and practices to achieve a result within a specific context. It has a whole section on what to do when agile is not a cultural match for the organization. While it is predicated on servant leadership, it recognizes that this does not mean you are a pushover. Sometimes you have to remove team members. The early chapters did not mandate a process, and there are a few of the engineering-type diagrams that overprescribe and overstructure what should be seen as a service delivery. Instead, they ask a series of questions with a range of suggested responses depending upon the answer. This is not a one-size-fits-all handbook, but a many-things-might-work-think-before-you-act assembly approach. Critically, it does not run away from the idea that management is necessary. One of the early phrases I highlighted was, some people call program management scaling agile. You could call it that. The real name is program management. Managing a program is a mixture of strategic and tactical needs, and the two need to coexist and interact to create resilient and adaptive solutions. By combining Lean and Agile with a basic understanding of complexity, it uses my Kinefin framework. The book sets out a roadmap by which a program can be a unique assembly of appropriate methods and tools derived from multiple sources. As the world requires shorter cycle delivery against increasingly poorly articulated needs, we need more of this deeply pragmatic thinking. Scaling is not about grand frameworks geared to making people comfortable and securing training revenues. It is about sound advice, good questions, and adaptive and flexible management. This book is a great contribution addressing that need, and I am grateful for the opportunity to write this forward. Professor Dave Snowden, Chief Scientific Officer, Cognitive Edge. Introduction We hear a lot of buzz about scaling Agile. Instead of scaling Agile, consider scale projects to a program. Program management is how we move from coordinating one's project's work to coordinating the work of several projects in a program. When your product requires you to collaborate across the organization, you need agile and lean program management. Program management is not a new idea. What might be new for you is the application of servant leadership to the program manager role. If you want to use agile and lean approaches, you as a program manager serve the program. You trust people to do the right thing and manage by exception. You use program management anytime you want to scale collaborative teams across the organization. Here are some possibilities. You are a project manager trying to corral a few teams together to release a product. You are a manager who needs several teams to collaborate on one strategic objective. You need to have the hardware and software people work together to release a product. You need marketing or sales or training or some other function to work with the software people to release a product. You might have a different circumstance for your program. All programs have one thing in common. The people collaborate across the organization to deliver the product. Whatever your product is, you or your team alone can't ensure that your product releases, no matter how agile or lean you are when your team says done. Programs are strategic collections of projects with one business objective. Program managers coordinate that one business objective across the organization. When you coordinate across the organization, you recognize the need for the other teams, regardless of their function, to maintain their autonomy in how they create their deliverables. For programs, everyone comes together to serve the program's needs. Everyone optimizes for the program, not for their team. Each program is unique. Some of you will have software-only programs. 
Some of you will want to use this book for products that include software, hardware, firmware, and mechanical components. That's why this book is based on principles, not mandates. Principle-based Agile and Lean might also be new for you, too. Remember that if you duplicate what works in small projects to larger programs, all you get is bloat. Bloat doesn't deliver, at least not easily. Take the principles of Agile and Lean and think, how could I apply these principles to my context? Whether you are a team member on a feature team, a core team member, or the program manager, this book has something for you. Why? Because the Agile and Lean program is a complex adaptive system. Everyone has his or her own role to play. And everyone in the Agile and Lean program has to be aware of the entire rest of the program. No one succeeds without everyone else succeeding. This book will help you see how to use Agile and Lean approaches to manage your program. Here's to your success. Now let's start. Chapter 1. Defining Agile and Lean Program Management Imagine this scenario. You're the program manager for an entire product. You arrive at work and check your email. You discover that one of the feature teams found a big hairy problem, but they fixed it with the help of another team. Did you need to intervene? No. Neither did the software program manager. Yes, your program is large enough, 18 feature teams, that you need a software program manager also. You're meeting with the core team today. Ellie, the marketing communications rep to the core team, has been working on her deliverables for a couple of weeks. The feature teams know they have to provide performance information so Marcom can finish their glossies. Marcom knows their deliverables are key to a successful product launch. Once you explained how to set up a Kanban in Marcom, they all got Kanban fever. Well, it seems that way. They love watching those stickies move across the board. The core team understands how their deliverables intersect with everyone else's deliverables now and why it's so critical that their parts are complete and done when they commit to dates. Everyone in the core team is talking about done. We sound just like the software teams, they say. The program architect was concerned about the architecture evolution just two months ago. He'd never seen an architecture evolve. He'd always planned the architecture in advance. Then the architecture evolved anyway. You and the program product owner and the software program manager all felt as if you'd talked him off the cliff. He conceded and was willing to try to evolve with the architecture. Surprisingly enough, the product is simpler than he thought right now. He's coding for the first time in years. He's happy. So are the future teams. They feel as if they are part of the design thinking, not just taking orders from some guy with his head in the clouds. Senior management is happy with you because every month you demonstrate something real, even if it's small. It's only been three months, and you have a release candidate. R&D has never been able to produce something that fast. Three months into the program, and you have a working product that the company can sell. Well, once Marcom finishes their deliverables. Is this a fantasy? No. This is how Agile and Lean program management works. In fact, with the exception of the Kanban board, that is how I worked in 1988 on a real product in a real organization. Many successful programs repeat these principles. Build trust among the teams on the program. Deliver often to see feedback. Build trust across the organization. Let's review the Agile and Lean principles so you can consider how to apply them to your program. 1.1. Review the 12 principles of Agile software development. The following list paraphrases the 12 primary principles of Agile software development. To see the original principles, go to www.agilemanifesto.org forward slash principles dot html web address and additional reference material available in the supplemental materials pdf available for download at www.jrothman.com 1. deliver early and often to satisfy the customer 2. welcome changing requirements 3. deliver working software frequently 4. business people and developers must work together. 5. Trust motivated people to do their jobs. 6. 
Face-to-face conversation is the most efficient and effective method of conveying information. 7. Working software is the primary measure of progress. 8. Maintain a sustainable pace. 9. Continuous attention to technical excellence and good design enhances agility. 10. Simplicity. The art of maximizing the amount of work not done is essential. 11. The best architectures, requirements, and designs emerge from self-organizing teams. 12. Reflect and adjust at regular intervals. The point of the Agile principles is that you collaborate across the organization, seeing working product as a way to work with the customer and make sure you're on track. You work in a way that enhances technical excellence so you can accommodate change. You inspect and adapt as you proceed on the product and the process so that you can fine-tune your team and your product. 1.2. Review the Seven Lean Principles In their book Lean Software Development, an Agile Toolkit, Mary and Tom Poppendike summarize their lean approach with these seven principles. 1. Eliminate waste. 2. Amplify learning. 3. Decide as late as possible. 4. Deliver as fast as possible. 5. Empower the team. 6. Build integrity in. 7. See the whole. Lean principles help you see the whole process for a team or a program or anything in between. You consider when to make decisions and learn as you proceed. Lean encourages you to see the entire product. Use the Agile and Lean principles as you manage risk and solve problems in the program. Consider how you can apply them to your program. The principles help you understand how to use Agile and Lean on your program. 1.3. Agile and Lean Together Create Adaptive Programs When you use Agile and Lean principles, you can create and steer an adaptive, resilient program. When I use the word program from now on, please think Agile and Lean or Adaptive. 1.4. A program is a strategic collection of several projects. A program is a collection of projects where the value is in the overall deliverable. Yes, each project may have a deliverable that's valuable. However, the value to the organization is when all the projects get together and deliver their product. That is a concurrent program. You may also have a serial program, such as delivering a series of releases over a product's lifetime. Think of a smartphone as an example of a strategic collection of several projects. One project might be the feature set that allows the phone to make and answer a call. Another project could be the feature set to access and leave voicemail. Another two feature sets might be the accounting for the voice data and the download data. The texting feature set would be another project. Do you see how each set of features could be its own project? Each of these projects might require one or more feature teams working together. The teams work autonomously, however they like, as long as they are agile or lean, delivering their completed features often. Each project and team works in parallel. Each project has its own rhythm and staff and backlog. The projects deliver a working product as a program. Beware of a collection of ranked backlogs with no strategic reason behind the order. If there isn't a larger business objective behind the backlogs, it's not a program. You might need to accomplish all that work. And if the ranked backlogs together don't create a coherent business value where the entire product is more valuable than each project, you don't have a program. Can you have waterfall teams with your Agile and Lean teams and still have a successful program? It depends on whether the waterfall teams have interdependencies with the Agile and Lean teams. Make sure you listen to Chapter 16, Integrating Agile and Not Agile Teams in Your Program. Each program needs a coherent vision behind the program so you can create a program charter. The charter helps the feature teams take responsibility for their trade-offs. We'll talk more about this in Chapter 4. Start your program right. With a program charter in place, the feature teams won't need to work up and then down a hierarchy. Some people call program management scaling agile. You could call it that. 
The real name is program management. In program management, you scale agile and lean collaboration practices across the entire program so you can release a great product. 1.5. Program management facilitates the program to release. Program management is the coordination and facilitation of all the work across the organization to release the product. The job of the program manager is to coordinate the team so they can understand enough of each other's risks so they can deliver. The program manager does not and cannot do this alone. The program is all about collaboration. Tip. Projects are tactical. They get the work done. The program is strategic. It ties the projects together to bring them to delivery. 1.6. Program management coordinates the business value. I've seen, and I bet you have too, programs where the software was all done except for one small piece. The product couldn't release because that piece was vital to the release. Or the software was done, but the marketing was not. Or the hardware was done, the marketing was done, and the software was stuck. If you employ agile approaches to the programs, you get to see visible progress, or lack thereof, at the end of each iteration or the end of each feature in flow or as the teams create the product. You don't have to wait until the predicted or desired end of the program to see the risk. That's one of the ways agile reduces technical and schedule risk. The iterations or flow help you get to done across the entire program. Each iteration helps you see how things fit together. The demonstration at the end of an iteration, or at a milestone, shows you where you have technical risk, which reduces schedule risk. In general, incremental approaches reduce schedule risk and iterative approaches reduce technical risk. Because Agile combines both, you reduce both kinds of risk. For more detail on life cycles, see my book, Manage It, Your Guide to Modern Pragmatic Project Management. Information available in the bibliography in the Supplemental Materials PDF available for download at www.jrothman.com. If you use lean approaches to your program, you can reduce the work in progress, which will allow you to maximize throughput. A lean approach will enable you to see bottlenecks, reduce waste, and see what is not getting done. You need both agile and lean for a program. You don't have to release each iteration or feature to your customers. You can decide when to release externally. That's a business decision. When you see completed work, each feature or each iteration is how you know you provide business value. 1.7. Agile Program Management Scales Collaboration In non-agile program management, project managers or functional managers speak for their project teams or functional area. They commit people, manage risks, and commit other resources, such as money. Notice that there is no program-specific view of the product or transparent coordination across the functional teams. Those programs may not have a ranked product backlog. In program management, there is no hierarchy. Everyone collaborates and coordinates across the cross-functional teams. The collaboration avoids coordination chaos. The program teams solve problems cross-functionally. That's a huge difference. Instead of functional managers committing on behalf of functional teams, feature teams commit to the program. The program team has the responsibility for removing obstacles so that the program delivers the business value of the program. Lean thinking adds the holistic view to the program. When we add lean, we empower teams and eliminate waste. We amplify everyone's learning to build integrity into the product by seeing the work in progress, sharing decisions, and having a fine-grained definition of done. This is critical because the more people we have, the more chances we have to learn and make mistakes. If we take a lean approach at the beginning, we start with principles that make sense for building great products. In the same way, the good product management was never about command and control. Good program management is not about command and control. Good program management is servant leadership. Program management enables coordination, helping the teams and projects to collaborate to deliver some specific business objectives. 
Once your program has more than two teams or you need to coordinate with multiple people across the organization, releasing your product becomes much more difficult. Program management helps you coordinate across the organization so that everyone focuses on the goal, releasing a great product that works. 1.8. Agile and Lean Effect Change at the Program Level Agile is about the ability to change by delivering running, tested features that are valuable to the business and learning from that work. Lean is all about seeing the whole, the flow of your work, building integrity into your work, and eliminating waste. If you add the technical practices, which you must in a large program, the program makes visible the values of simplicity, respect, and courage. Everyone commits to their work. You create empowered teams. You will get increased speed as a byproduct if you have the ability to change. You will get speed if you reduce your work in progress, whip, and waste. No management can mandate Agile and Lean at the program level. Feature teams who can adapt and work together with a product focus create the Agile and Lean program. As a result of transitioning to Agile and Lean in the teams and using adaptive program management, you will obtain better delivery to market speed as a result. 1.9 what program managers do. The program manager is the voice or the face of the program. The program manager represents the program to the PMO, Project Management Office, or to senior managers in the organization. As a program manager, I reported to the operations committee a team of senior managers. The program manager facilitates the collaboration across the organization. The program manager is a servant leader. Program management doesn't drive anything to completion. Program managers enable the program participants to finish their work. 1.10. Take a product perspective. You may have noticed I've been talking about your product. You might have applications that you refer to as systems. You might integrate several systems from other vendors. Some of you might have something else. I take a product-centric view of things. I suggest you do, too. If you think all the time, who is the customer for this, you might have some insights about how to use Agile and Lean to deliver. Consider the following anecdote from an experienced program manager. I think product now. I used to think about systems or applications. I've been a program manager doing in-house financial applications for years. When I started thinking about products instead of applications, a funny thing happened. Other people started talking about product, too. The product owners and the program started to talk about their customers differently. They started to name their users with specific personas. I did not expect that to happen. Our stories got smaller. Our feature teams produced more value because they got to done on smaller stories faster, all because I started talking about product, not application. Okay, now you know what an Agile or Lean program is. Let's talk about how you might organize your program. 1.11. Principles of Agile and Lean Program Management 1. Take a product perspective. The principle is business people and developers must work together. 2. Agile and Lean approaches encourage a holistic approach to the product where you can change more easily to meet current needs. The principle is, welcome changing requirements. This is a competitive advantage. Three, program managers are servant leaders. The principles are, build projects around motivated individuals, trust them to get the job done, and empower the team. Chapter 2. Consider your program context. You and all the members of your program will make multiple decisions on a daily basis. The Kinevin framework is a way of thinking about your context with the intent of guiding your actions. I use Kinevin to think about how I solve problems. Can we use good practices that everyone else uses? Do we need to experiment to know how to proceed? Do we have so many unknowns that we don't know where to start? 2.1. Kinevin helps with decisions. 
The Kinevin framework is a sense-making framework you can use to solve problems. Use it to guide your approach to your program. See Figure 2.1 in the online supplemental materials PDF at www.jrothman.com. Based on the fact you are working in the program, you are not in the obvious context. A program, by its very nature, is at least in the complicated context because of the number of communication paths. If everyone is in a single physical location, you may be in the complicated context. In the complicated context, you can see straight cause-and-effect relationships among the different stresses in your program. If all your teams are experienced, agile, or lean teams who know how to deliver small stories each day or so, you might be in the complicated context. You understand what your unknowns are. You can use known and reasonable practices for organizing and working on your Agile program. As soon as you and the people in your program are not in the same location, you are no longer in the complicated context. You have moved into either the complex or chaotic context. That's because your communication will have delivery or communication lags and other interferences. Problem causes or effects may be unclear and even unknown, if only due to communication lags. If people on your program are multitasking, or if you have people or teams who can't commit to the program, or if many of your future teams are new to Agile, you are at least in the complex context. You may be in the chaotic context. In either of these contexts, the unknowns create many risks and potential problems. In my experience, if you can say, We've done work like this, but never at this complexity or with this many teams, or never as distributed as we are now. You're in the complex context. You have many unknown unknowns. You will have to manage the risk of those unknowns. As you look at the Kinevin framework, ask yourself, what context reflects your reality? How will that context help you decide whether you should sense, probe, or act as an experiment first? If you're in the complicated part of the framework, you need experts to solve the problems in your program. I'm not talking about experts that create bottlenecks by working alone. Instead, develop a community of experts. Maybe most of the people on your program working in their communities of practice to help solve the problems. If you're in the complex part of the framework, consider these actions. What experiments will you use to probe to discover your unknowns? And what problems can you solve to move the program back to the complicated part of the framework where you can know your challenges? Kinevin is not a two-by-two -two matrix where you locate your program, use that to make decisions, and never return to the framework. Instead, especially with programs of nine teams or more, different parts of the program will have different challenges. The more unknowable the challenges, the more that part of the program is in the complex part of the framework. As the teams deliver features, they learn more. That part of the program moves to the complicated part of the framework. Sometimes teams in the complicated part of the framework finish features. As they learn, they uncover a huge gotcha. That might cause them to be in the complex part of the framework until they run some experiments to see what they can do. As a program manager, how can you identify issues early when you encounter complex again? How can you help the program move from complex to complicated? There are no easy answers. There is no recipe. This is work. It's the reason why we need program management to recognize and solve problems across the organization. The Kinevin framework reveals why agile program management can be difficult. As teams complete their features, the product owners need to update the roadmap and the backlogs. It's possible the program will finish before expected. Completing, or not, other projects or programs may affect the organization's project portfolio. Certainly, one team's feature completion might affect the ability of other teams to deliver. Regardless of your context, a program is emergent. With emergent projects, you can't plan everything at the beginning. You can see a roadmap, plan a little, and continue learning and adapting as you proceed. You might want to keep the same vision of the product, but teams, with their product owners, might select different work. Or as your customers, product owners, see the product, they might want to change the product direction. 
If the teams don't complete features on a short, regular basis, no one can understand what the program status is. If the core team doesn't solve problems that allow the program to create a product, 